Hello, people of the internet. My name is Nick from Russian Magic. Today, I'm going to bring you a deck profile. Something very, very weird. Like, I literally do not know what to call this deck. It's Monarch Hero Shadal. Uh, when Monarchs got hit, I wanted to do something with them simply because uh, the team here at Motor City Magic, we are known for playing decks in both Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic that after they get hit and their cards get banned, that's when we decide to play them because we can think of other cards that can be put into the spotlight that can be played in a deck that can give it the push it needs to top a regional, to top an SCG open, to top something. So, I played full power monarchs, mostly domain monarchs, because fuck spending money on an extra deck. But this extra deck I already had, and plus I bought my buddy's extra deck monarch for 40 bucks, so I was like, whatever. Uh, like, it was just all, it was just play sets of monarch cards, a few artifact things, and uh, it let me have an extra monarch deck that way i could let my buddy play domain monarch if he didn't have a deck on him so uh shout out to atm24 for this he let me build this deck he let me borrow some cards for it uh if i don't play mermail this is probably the deck i'm playing at locals i want to see how it goes really want to test this deck it's been a lot of fun like this is probably one of the few decks in Yu-Gi-Oh that i actually enjoy playing just because it's a control deck that has a combo finish to it which i'm gonna make an entire combo video for this because honestly there are so many dumb stupid plays in this deck that you would literally need to sit down and understand all the combos so let's get started with the deck profile so one aether sadly uh i wanted her banned actually like i actually said that aether was going to get hit on the ban list simply because this is the best card in the deck like if you ever like if you see this card you just win like every time i've resolved an aether i've won the game like the card is just that good so you play the one aether uh three erebus this is actually the best like the best card in the deck it's a dark monarch that can get itself out of the graveyard, and that is something this deck is very good at, is recurring the cards from your graveyard. So if you, as long as you can get a graveyard set up, you can get your plays going. And of course, the deck kind of loses to graveyard hate, but we easily have cards to out, out graveyard hate in this deck. And he is one of them, so we play three of them. Uh, one Karaz. Uh, I don't know, I really want to fit a second one in here, I just can't find the room, and also I don't have a second one. Uh, one is perfectly fine, though, because Erebus can get him back from the graveyard, so it is a recurrable resource, and it's a very good card, so you gotta play that. And then for the Squires, I'm playing two copies of Edia and two copies of Eidos. Recurrable card advantage. This buys back your Monarch Spiller Traps, this buys back Edia to buy back Monarch Spiller Traps, and this is a dark, and it has very nutty combo plays. So that's it for the Monarch engine. On to the Hero engine. Three Destiny Hero Malicious. Uh, obviously, rank six plays for days. Like, as long as you can get one of these into the graveyard, you get your plays going. One Shadow Mist and one Dark Greffer. Um, you know, it's just a small hero engine. Uh, this is just to make Dark Law, because Dark Law is the tits. Like, you summon Dark Law and you win. <laughs> like, you can easily have a first turn board of Dark Law Durandal, and your opponent just can't play. Like, they literally just can't play, so. Uh, I kind of want to play a second Dark Greffer. But I'm not sure yet. The deck is still going through testing phases. But this is definitely like MVP right here. And then for the Shadal engine, playing three copies of Shadal Squamata because it's the best one because it foolishes. Then we have two copies of Shadal Beast because it draws you a card. And it's a level five, which is very important. And then one copy of Shadal Falco. Uh, first, this deck was just Monarch Hero, which I saw on Glasgow's channel. So I'm going to put all the links to all the things that I've said in the description down below. Glasgow's video, ATM's channel, all that shit. But I, I, I had these Shadal cards in my common box. I was like, I need to use these for something. Because we haven't played Shadals in a very long time. So I was like, hey, let's incorporate the Shadal engine into my Monarch deck and see if we can get a combo going. And we figured out so many combos with these cards that they're just insane in this deck. It sucks that they don't trigger when you discard them for cost like Twin Twister. But you take that as you can get it. Ooh. Oh, I'm very sorry. I'm making this video... Uh, way too late. Uh, that is it for monsters. I don't know how many there are, but I think there's like 20. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Wow, I was right. 20 monsters. For spells, uh, 1 Pantheism, rip. 3 Tenacity. This is like the MVP. Like, as long as you open Tenacity in a Monarch, you're fine. But like, if you, like, literally, like, the Nutsands, like, Tenacity, Aether, and like, 3 other cards. 
It's fucking stupid. Uh, Stormforth. Honestly, this card shouldn't have been hit either. Like, honestly, if Aether got banned, you could have left Stormforth at three because this card is like the card is sacky as shit, but it's balanced. Kind of. Like, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> Just hit one or the other is what I'm trying to say. Because, like, you didn't need to hit Stormforth, but they hit Stormforth anyway. So, one Stormforth. It's not even, like... This card isn't even crucial. Like, you don't need to see Stormforth to win in this deck. Two return. Play three of this. Just... I hate revealing return and return tenacity after I've already activated tenacity. But I simply just cannot find room for the third return, so... Or play 41 cards. I don't fucking care. For the hero part, the one hero lives and the two mass change second. The reason you play mass change second over mass change is because you want to turn your Shadals into Dark Law because they trigger, and then you want to turn Mali into Dark Law, which just ranks, which creates a rank 6 play. So that is very, very amazing. 2 Instant Fusion. Really want to put this card to 3. Like, like every single time you have Instant Fusion, you either extend your play or you create a play. Like It's literally just a playmaker by itself in the deck. Where it either it lets you summon a monster that's Tribute Fodder, or it summons a monster to revive a thing from the graveyard. God damn it. God fucking damn it. Anyway. Like, Instant Fusion is just, like, the best combo card in the deck, so I'm probably going to up it to three. Two Twin Twister, just to eliminate back row, eliminate shield spells. You can pop your own cards to trigger things. For the one ofs, one Upstart, uh, one Rota, and one Foolish Burial. These are the best cards in the deck, the best spells. Foolish, like, literally, if I could play three Foolish, I would. I'm also considering a Mathematician, but that, I, that deck, I just can't fit it in the deck. Rhoda can get to Dark Greffer, which becomes a Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial itself, and upstarts just 39 cards, so you might as well play a 39 card deck when you're playing a combo deck. 17 spells, and then for the traps, two copies of Prime. Uh, we tested three. Three was just really too inconsistent. Like, you never need the third one. Uh, it just makes rank fives and extends your combos, which is nice. And, like, Escalation's the best card ever. Like, literally, the amount of times you just, like, tribute someone to all Beast, and then be like, ha, I'm 2200. Fuck you. It's literally just amazing. Where, or like, if you tribute summon out Karaz on your opponent's turn and you disrupt their combo plays. This card's really good, but if you wanted to, you this might get cut for the third instant fusion, might get cut for the third prime, I don't know yet. But that's the 40 card main deck. Again, the deck is very, very combo centric. It was really hard just fitting the space in itself for all the engines that uh, I wanted to play. Just because the deck needs to run so many engines and incorporate so many cards that that can actually work so uh, i don't even know what i cut out for the cards i want anyway on to the extra deck <sighs> oh i need to go to bed soon uh one norden this card's really good make rank four plays for five a monster whatever uh one guilty of the d knight this card uh, shout out to Hendo, again, like I usually do, because he introduced me to this card when he played it in his extra deck monitor, because it was level 5 light, and he made Pleiades on me with this card, I'm like, holy shit. It's really cool. Uh, other, you could play Panzer Dragon instead, because you could actually instant fusion Panzer Dragon, pop and uh, did kill it, and then pop a card, which is fine, but, uh, Guilty is just a level 5 light warrior, and it's the best instant fusion target to play, because it leads to rank 5 plays, also tribute fodder, and you can use it for a synchro, which I will talk about later. Uh, and then two copies of Master of Dark Law. Uh, I've never really needed the second one, but the second one's there. Just because I don't have a Master of Koga, and because you're running a decent amount of lights, you could play Koga in the set as well. But I just don't have one at the moment. So that does it for the fusions. For the Syngros, because we're playing Shadal Falco, one copy of Stardust Charge Warrior and one copy of Arcanite Magician. Stardust Charge Warrior is so fucking good. Like, you, you summon it, you draw a card, and then if you have a Mali in the graveyard, you can... Um, Banish Mali, summon Mali with this on board, and then you get to make a rank 6, and that's just really good. And then Arcanite is just spot removal. You use it with Falco and Beast, or you can, like, uh, oh, Guilty is not a spellcaster. I thought it was a spellcaster. If Guilty was a spellcaster, you could Falco Guilty into this, but. Uh, these are just the two synchros I play because of the Shadals. Uh, onto the extra deck, or onto the XCs. One Dweller and one Castell. I thought about Diagusto Emerald, I just didn't think it was needed. Dweller just shuts down the graveyard, obviously. That's why you play him. And then Castell, you just out, like, a macro or a defissure or whatever your opponent has on board that bothers you. Or you can book a moon. Uh, book a moon one of your Shadals, which is really cool. Uh, Shark Fortress, this leads to an OTK. I'll talk about it in the combo video. Uh, one Artifact Durandal. This is just to create the first turn lock with Dark Law and Durandal. And that's usually just a game winner, because what you do is 
you go Darklaw, Durndal, set card, have a card in hand. That way Darklaw is going to like spin cards back and then you get to trigger it. I'll, I'll just show you that in the combo video. Uh, one Fulcasaurus. Might put this to two. This card's tits. Like, just blowing up a monster and dealing burn damage is fantastic. And then one Plades. Uh, Plades is still the tits. Like, just start bouncing cards, and uh, you can bounce, like, your own returns and stuff, and you can bounce your own Monarchs. This bounce, like, Plades and it, like, when you have Aether on board and you bounce it with Plades, your opponent just, like, wants to kill you. For rank 6s, one Photon Strike Bouncer, one Constellar Ptolemy N7, just the best rank 6s in the game right now, I feel. Uh, I really can't think of any better ones, but if you have a better rank 6, leave it down in the comment section. Uh, Beatrice is also very good, but I just don't own a Beatrice, so... Uh, with Bouncer, you just negate monster effects, and he's 2,700. M7's really broken. Bouncing Aether, bouncing extra deck cards, uh, getting rid of cards in the graveyard. Like, it's just really fucking good. And then for the rank 8, I'm playing one Alce, the Sylvan High Protector. You excavate one by detaching, and then if it's the card you declared, put it in your hand, otherwise it goes to the graveyard. And then if a card is sent from your deck to the graveyard, you can detach and then bounce a card. So again, you can bounce your Aether, you can bounce whatever you want. Uh, I've never made it yet. But it's just good in theory, so. Again, like, the only thing for the extra deck, Koga and Beatrice. That's really it. Uh, moving on to the side deck. The side deck's just a bunch of generic good cards. Uh, two copies of Effect Veiler, just because you can still hit stuff like Cosmo Monsters. You can hit, like, the Tour Guide in the BA matchup. Uh, if you ever run into the Mirror Match, you Veiler their idea, you still win. Uh, against Cosmo, I'm really liking Battle Fader. Just because you can battle fader into Dark Law and your opponent's board, like you've stopped them from killing you and you've advanced your own board state. So battle fader is a really good card. Uh, and then two copies of Maxi. I might put these in the main deck. It depends on how the format shapes up. But Maxi has just been turning out really good. You sided in in a lot of matchups. You really sided in for going second because sometimes in a matchup, if you're up against something like uh, like if you're up against Cosmo, you make Cosmo go first. Unless it's Fire King Cosmo, then you go second every fucking time. Like, you don't want to let Fire King Cosmo go first. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, so this card has just been really good. Like, I wish I could still play three of it, but whatever. Two Artifact Lancia. This card's tits. It's a level five light, and it stops banishing stuff, so it's a, it's really good. That does it for monsters. For spells, one copy of Frost Blast. This is an out to Demise deck, so you can, like, send it off of... Aether and Erebus and stuff, and you can just like get it back with Eddie a bunch of times, start blowing up back row. So it's really good. Uh, let's see. Uh, usually if I side that in, I side out like a return or something. Two spell arrow. <sighs> pendulum. Like, you have a really shitty pendulum matchup. Like, I'm not playing domain. Domain is like, it helped for rank six plays, but. You, it just doesn't do anything. Like, we're getting 3,600 is cool, but you don't need it. Just because, like, if you're up against Blue Eyes, you just set up Dark Claw Durnal and you just win. Uh, but you play two spells saving arrow just to deal with Pendulum. You can also deal with stuff like Field Spells or you'll send you or whatever. Three roll decree. The tits. Best card in the side deck for sure. Just if you're up against a Demise deck, uh, Demise Cosmo or whatever, you can just flip this and just win. And then the last card in the deck is Solemn Morning, because it's just probably the best trap in the game at the moment. Like, it's literally just the best card. So anyway, guys, that is my really weird take on this deck. Uh, I really like it. It's a lot of fun. I'm actually enjoying it. it this makes me interested in Yu-Gi-Oh, because I really hate this game. Like, it's just been gotten so stale, and, like, all the meta decks are so boring. And mirror matches take 40 minutes, and this is just a deck that's got me really interested in playing the game again. I really love it. So anyway, guys, my name is Nick from Rose City Magic. Like, comment, subscribe. Leave all the suggestions that you want in the, sec in the comment section down below. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'm going to try to get it when I go to Locals this weekend. So, uh, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.